Swedish climate activist Greta Thunberg labeled the move to hold the COP29 climate talks in Azerbaijan absurd on Monday as she joined a demonstration against the summit being held in Baku. Thunberg joined protesters in neighboring Georgia and said Azerbaijan should not be given legitimacy to host the United Nations annual summit to discuss how to avoid increasing threats from climate change. Georgian civil activist Tamar Jakili said the rally was also held to protest what demonstrators say is rising authoritarianism in the region. Sandwiched between Iran to the south and Russia to the north, Azerbaijan is on the Caspian Sea and was part of the Soviet Union from 1922 to 1991. Nearly all of the country's exports are oil and gas, two of the world's leading sources of planet-warming carbon dioxide emissions. Azerbaijani officials have argued that it is unfair to criticize Baku for producing more fossil fuels when there is a demand for them across Europe as national governments endeavor to keep fuel prices low for citizens. I'm joining activists in this region where COP29 is currently being held in Baku. Stand united, Armenian, Azerbaijani and Georgian activists, along with allies around the world, demanding an end. Right now, COP29 is being held in Azerbaijan, which is a repressive occupying state, uh, which have committed ethnic cleansing and uh, which are continuously cracking down on Azerbaijani civil society uh, and are now trying to use this COP29 um, as a chance to greenwash their crimes and uh, human rights abuses. and. Uh, we cannot stand silent in that and we cannot give them any legitimacy in in this situation uh, which is why we are standing here united saying no to greenwashing um, and no to the azerbaijani regime <laughs> the climate crisis is an existential crisis um, 2024 is on track to become the hottest year ever recorded and last year global greenhouse gas emissions reached an all-time high um, and at, in this moment that the UNFCCC is hosting yet another COP climate meeting in an authoritarian petrol state is beyond absurd. <laughs> We are protesting uh, the rising authoritarianism in the region, as well as specifically authoritarianism in Azerbaijan. Right now, the world's biggest climate conference is starting in Baku, and uh, Azerbaijan has 300 political prisoners. And in Georgia, similar kind of authoritarian regime is uh, threatening Georgia's civil society with repressions. So yeah, we are here united against authoritarianism and for social justice. Do you really want even further global instability costing precious life? United Nations Climate Chief Simon Steele asked delegates in a passionate speech on Monday in Baku, delivering opening remarks at the COP29 summit. Soaring rhetoric, urgent pleas and pledges of cooperation contrasted with a backdrop of seismic political changes, global wars and economic hardships as United Nations annual climate talks began Monday and got right to the hard part, money. We must agree a new global climate finance goal, Steele said in his opening statement. He said failure to reach climate goals would result in higher energy and grocery bills, weakened economies and global instability, for everyone. If at least two-thirds of the world's nations cannot afford to cut emissions quickly then every nation pays a brutal price. If nations can't build resilience into supply chains, the entire global economy will be brought to its knees. No country is immune, he said. The financial package being hashed out at this year's talks is important because every nation has until early next year to submit new, and presumably stronger,
targets for curbing emissions of heat-trapping gases from the burning of coal, oil and natural gas. That's part of the 2015 Paris Agreement for nations to ratchet up efforts every five years. The long-term global average temperature is now 1.3 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial times, only two-tenths of a degree from the agreed-upon threshold. For the world to prevent more than 1.5 degrees of warming, global carbon emissions must be slashed by 42% by 2030, a new United Nations report said. We cannot leave Baku without a substantial outcome, Steele said. Now is the time to show that global cooperation is not down for the count. It is rising to the moment. Excellencies, delegates, colleagues, friends, it is an honor to welcome you to COP29. I thank Dr. Sultan Al Jaber and the Emirati Presidency for their tireless work as they pass the baton to President Babiev and Azerbaijan. This UNFCCC process is the only place we have to address the rampant climate crisis and to credibly hold each other to account to act on it. And we know this process is working because without it, humanity would be headed towards five degrees of global warming. We cannot afford to continue upending lives and livelihoods in every nation. So let's make this real. Do you want your grocery and energy bills to go up even more? Do you want your country to become economically uncompetitive? Do you really want even further global instability costing precious life. This crisis is affecting every single individual in the world one way or another. We must agree a new global climate finance goal. If at least two-thirds of the world's nations cannot afford to cut emissions quickly, then every nation pays a brutal price. If nations can't build resilience into supply chains, the entire global economy will be brought to its knees. No country is immune. And even as temperatures rise, the implementation of our agreements must claw them back. Clean energy, and infrastructure investment will reach $2 trillion in 2024, almost twice that of fossil fuels. The shift to clean energy and climate resilience will not be stopped. Our job is to accelerate this and make sure its huge benefits are shared by all countries and all people. In the past few years, we've taken some historic steps forward. We cannot leave Baku without a substantial outcome. Appreciating the importance of this moment, parties must act accordingly. Now is the time to show that global cooperation is not down for the count. It is rising to the moment. So I urge you all, let us rise together. I thank you.